Let's talk about electrodes and using your electrotherapy device. Electrodes are probably the most important medium in delivering electrotherapy for your treatment applications. This is where the current is going to flow through the targeting tissue that you're trying to either address with pain or rehab in a muscle re-education way. Not all electrodes are created equal. Remember that size is very important. The quality of the adhesive that's used in the electrode is very important. Even the backing that's used is very important. For example, cloth back electrodes will conform better to individual body parts much better than foam backed electrodes, okay? The quality of the adhesion is very important because there are two elements that really help with driving good outcomes with electrotherapy, and that's the quality of the adherence of the electrode on the body part and the amount of impedance or resistance of flow from the current through the electrode into the tissue and back out again. The electrode builds up or it's a low quality electrode that has too much resistance, it will force you to use more amplitude, more current to try to deliver the type outcome that you're looking for. So remember, low impedance, low resistance, high adhesion factors are very good in terms of electrode application and use. The other thing to keep in mind is size. If we're going to be using and treating electrodes for larger muscle groups like the quad, we want to use larger electrodes so we can create more force output of the current and the waveform you're using if, for example, you're trying to re-educate muscle it'll be more comfortable for the patient and create and elicit more um, motor units of muscle fibers. So keep that in mind. For smaller muscle groups, as in the forearm and the wrist ex extensors, we would typically use smaller electrodes like two inch square or two inch round. So keep in mind in terms of the body part and the muscle groups that you're working with and the size of electrodes. One last note, we'll talk about cross-contamination and infection control issues. Never before did we have an antimicrobial electrode that could kill the six most common bacteria found in healthcare. Think about MRSA, staph, and some of the other uh, important infections that exist in healthcare. Well, Rich Mars Microblock Electrode is the first ever electrode on the market that actually does kill bacteria throughout the life of that particular pack of electrodes. For pain management, the most common method of electrode placement is basically to surround the area of pain, or in some terminology, it's bracket the area of pain. So let's take the lateral elbow of the patient where they're experiencing the pain. We're going to take two electrodes that are either two inch round or two inch square because we're dealing with smaller area and smaller muscle groups, and we're just going to bracket or surround the area of pain and then attach our lead wires and go through our uh, electrotherapy protocol. Uh, one other strategy, or another strategy, could be to actually stimulate, place the electrodes and actually stimulate the nerve root at the C6 level that corresponds with the lateral elbow pain. Some other strategies you can do is stimulate the dermatome for the lateral elbow pain, which would be in essentially the forearm area. So we take the two electrodes and just simply move them down to the forearm area. Okay. Other strategies could be to look at stimulating the trigger point area or acupuncture points. Uh, another key consideration to remember when you're talking about electrotherapy and electrode placement is to make sure and understand how far apart the electrodes are. Okay. The closer the electrodes are on the tissue, the more superficial the current will flow. The further apart they are, the deeper the current is going to flow. So for example, if your goal is to stimulate the forearm muscles here to get a contraction and focus on wrist, wrist extension, if your electrodes are too far apart, you run the risk of not only getting wrist extension, at the proper amplitude, but also incorporating the hip or the wrist flexors at that point. So just keep in mind that proper space between the electrodes is very important. Now for a word on NMES for muscle strengthening protocols for weak inhibited muscles, I have put electrodes, larger electrodes on my bicep muscle, for example, but I've placed them in a longitudinal direction. 
because we can get more force output and be comfortable to the patient, in this case me. So we have a protocol pulled up on the TheraTouch unit. It's your uh, re muscle re-education protocol within the clinical protocol menu. Uh, everything is already turned up. I'm just going to simply select my amplitude button and I'm just increasing the amplitude and what I'm looking for and what you should see in just a minute or a few seconds is enough contraction of the muscle with the amplitude to get a contraction in this fashion. So this isn't me, this is actually the output of the amplitude and the, the protocol that I'm using for NMES. Okay, let's review the proper way to remove the electrodes from the patient at the end of a treatment session. Keep in mind that what you want to avoid is grabbing onto the pigtail and pulling from that direction. You'll definitely reduce the life of that electrode by pulling on that pigtail too much. The proper way you want to do it is basically take your thumb and forefinger and just peel up an edge and take your other hand with either your forefinger or your thumb and just hold down the patient's tissue as you're peeling back gently the electrode. Simply place it back on the backing it came with and do the same thing with the second electrode. Hold down the patient's tissue and then peel back the electrode. Place it back on the backing. Obviously remove your lead wires and put your electrodes back into the sealable bag for the patient's next treatment session. Now with the microblock electrode, the fact that it kills bacteria on contact really helps with another part of cross-contamination. While it's great for your staff and the patient with the interface with each other, when you put this back into the patient's file, it prevents cross-contamination with other patient electropacks.